I wanted to make a short video to reflect on the life and the legacy of one of our great civil rights leaders that uh, left us uh, in the last week, um, Lonnie King. And I am just blessed beyond words that for, uh, I would say, the last 10 years of his life that I really got to know him on a very... Um, on a very direct and personal level and he was always very uh, inspirational and uh, we always had great conversations I was very interested in knowing about his childhood and uh, growing up in Atlanta as well as in uh, South Georgia I think he was from Randolph County uh, in the 40s, he talked about his grandfather um, and discrimination and all of this stuff. Uh, and I am so honored by the fact that I had a chance to tell him while he was here uh, the, of the the impact that I felt that he made on my life. I can't go downtown Atlanta and not think about Lonnie King. And I've, and I've told him that more than a few times. And that's because, uh, I think it was in October of 1960, uh, he, as a student leader at Morehouse, uh, very involved in the Atlanta student movement, uh, helped to desegregate the Magnolia Room, the cafeteria at Rich's, uh, which is, of course, now the Atlanta, uh, the, the Sam Nunn building downtown. Um, and the, the black power structure wanted to go slow. And, and he was bold. He was courageous. And he was able to, um, to get uh, Martin, Martin King involved, and I, I don't believe they were related as, uh, as far as he, I don't think that they were directly related, uh, but uh, you can't underscore the importance of a person like Lonnie King and what he did to civil rights, what he did to Atlanta, and what he did to the country. Um, and I think that whenever we lose giants like that, they are here for a season to impart such valuable knowledge and wisdom. And I am just enormously blessed that I was able to uh, to take it all in as a as like a sponge. Um, he would talk to me about uh, being in the Navy uh, when he left Morehouse. Um, and then, of course, just uh, all of his challenges with the NAACP. Uh, he, I, one of the things that he that that he liked to joke about was that there were two people uh, th that got thrown out of the NAACP twice. Uh, w. B. Du Bois was one, and and he was the other. And um, uh, that was something that 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 uh, we talked about and brought a, a measure of, of uh, satisfaction to him because he did that taking some stands that uh, people were not comfortable with. And so um, I, my, my prayers and thoughts are with his family, um, Kimberly, uh, Lonnie the Third, Margot, the grandchildren, and um, all of the uh, amazing uh, fellow leaders that he leaves behind. Um, and I have a lot of stories that um, he shared with me. And he never told me not to tell it. So at some point, I've got to find a way to um, either put it in a, in a blog or... Um, do a video, um, but uh, a lot of his sayings uh, 
just reverberate. I think about the fact that uh, we lost uh, General Marcelite Harris, uh, who was uh, active in the Atlanta NAACP. And because of the things that we were going through back in 2009 and 2010 and 2011, uh, I would call I would call Lonnie King General. I would call him the General, uh, because he was kind of he was he kind of operated like as a as a military uh, tactical uh, person that he knew strategy and he knew exactly what he wanted to do and he knew exactly how to convey it. And but 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 more than anything else, the thing that that really impressed me about him that I will never forget is just his humbleness. Um, you know, I'm not knocking anybody else, but we just never, I don't think that we as a community did enough to celebrate and honor him while he was here. And so I want us to, to use this time uh, to recognize uh, an outstanding civil rights leader um and that's pretty much all i wanted to say i'm sure i'll have much more to say in the days and months ahead uh his memorial service i think is the next in the next uh few days uh but i just thought i would uh record something uh right now to uh to as i've had a chance to to um uh, to gather my thoughts, and I'm still processing his death, even though I know he had been, uh, he had had some health challenges in the last uh, several months, uh, but his mind was always extremely sharp, and I just enjoyed talking to him about local politics, as well as uh, civil rights leaders, uh, pe people that were his contemporaries, and every August 30th, which was his birthday, I always made a point of, of uh, recognizing him on, on my Facebook page, and I'll keep doing that. So, so Mr. King, uh, I just wanted to, again, publicly thank you for everything that you've done. And I could hear him say, oh, Carl, you need to get on out of here, boy. You need to just get on out of here. Um, but that's all I wanted to say, and I will use the um, the wisdom that was that I was blessed to be around uh, from this point uh, for the rest of my life and that's about it